one of the things I really came to appreciate uh, here at JMU was something about myself, and that I, I learned to appreciate that I'm a, I'm a creative nerd. You know, I uh, for as long as I can remember, I've I've loved taking pictures and and making films and and uh, w just working on media. And then I've loved using whatever the newest tech was, the newest hardware, the newest software, the newest cameras, and putting putting the two together and and making cool stuff using new cool stuff. You know, that's like that's the, that's who I am. Um, and then also through JMU, I, I got a great internship at Discovery Communications. Um, and I got two years of it. I got my junior and senior year. I got to work in a, a production team that they have there. And I got to be a, a PA and an assistant editor, and I got to help make a new pilot. And I, I got to learn a lot of the nitty gritty about what it takes to make TV and, and video production. And, uh, and that internship led to a great interview, like a big boy interview once I graduated this year. Um, and I got an interview being an interactive producer. And I was like, oh yeah, producing. I, I can produce, like that's what I studied. So I went to film school, I can produce. And I get there and, and when I get there I find out that I'm, uh, I'm actually interviewing with the interactive web development team. And I'm like, okay, interactive web development, this is a little weird, I've never written a line of code in my life, I've never designed a website. This will be interesting. I'm still going confident, and I, I show them my video reel, and I show them my portfolio and everything, and, and they get right into it. And the first question they ask me is, have you ever experienced virtual reality? No, uh, I don't think I have. Have you ever heard of virtual reality? No, you know, I, I, I read that Wired article that one time, but I don't know what it means. But uh, do you like making content? Do you like make, telling stories? Yeah, you know, I, I, I like telling stories. Do you like using new technology? Yeah, I, I, love using new I love using new technology. You're perfect. And that was it. That was, really, that, that was basically it. I, I got hired to be an interactive producer making live action virtual reality for the Discovery Communications. And that night, I went home and I Googled what virtual reality was. Um, <laughs> and uh, the 15-second the version of what I found out was that uh, virtual reality is, is an immersive experience, and I'm doing with this with my hands because I brought a little toy. This is what a headset is. Uh, this is one of the virtual re reality headsets that can be found today. And what virtual reality is is when you, you wear a headset, you step into another world. And so when you turn your head, you can see the world that you're stepping into. It's an immersive experience. Uh, I won't do the whole sp speech while I'm inside there. That would be a little silly. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's what I had to learn how to make. And the creative nerd inside of me freaked out. I mean, this is amazing. I'm using the newest tech, the newest bleeding edge technology, and figuring out how to, to tell a story with it. I mean, this is perfect. And I dived into it. I mean, I spent a month in my parents' basement reading everything. Like, I, I, and I came back to my boss a, a month later, and I told him, you know, I, I think I've read everything online about how to make live action virtual reality. Like there wasn't a lot out there and I think I've read it all. I, I think I've got it. And so I came to him and I, I gave him a list of what the workflow should be, the, the cameras we need to buy, the software we needed. And he said, great, okay, let, let, let's go do it. And I was all confident. And it's a lot harder than it looks. I, I, was re I, I really thought I had it. And, and I'll explain why. So, for 130 plus years, when uh, photographers and filmmakers have been using cameras to capture the world around us, we've, we've gotten really good at it. But if you were to think about the whole world around you right now, think of it like a circle. Think of it like a pie. And when you point a camera in a certain direction and you take a picture, you capture the moment, but you only capture the moment in that direction. And the pie slice can be larger depending on what lens you use and all that good stuff. But you basically just capture a slice of that pie. And VR is different. In VR, you capture everything around you. In live action virtual reality, you capture the whole world around you as it happens. And so there's, there's a bunch of different ways we can do that. And a lot of, there's a lot of different cameras and rigs and everything. But the way we do it is we use, a, for most of our stuff, we, we use a six camera system. So we point one traditional camera in that direction. We point another in that direction. We point another behind us. We point another to our right. We point one up and we point one down. And then we capture that whole sphere. And then it's my job, to, to, and people like me, is we're stitchers, and we go in and we stitch all of those different cameras together to create a, a, a photorealistic and, and a real sphere around you that is a recreation of what happened and what happened in that moment. So you can c capture the whole world around you as it happens. And I said we didn't, it, it was, it's harder than it looks, and it is harder than it looks, but we got really good at it pretty quickly. I mean, I, it's my full-time job. I spent my whole life, and because I'm a creative nerd, I spent 24 hours a day doing it, you know? I think about it all the time. And we got over a lot of the problems really quickly, and we figured out all this stuff. A few more have come up, and we just, we figured it out. And as we got 
used to the problems and used to how to figure out our problems, we moved on from worrying about the technology behind virtual reality and we started thinking about the user and the audience and who's watching this stuff. And we started thinking about the experience they had when they're watching this stuff. And as we dug into it more, we started thinking about how people consume content anyways. And so, I mean, we all consume content through our phone, you know? We're hunched over, our neck is down, we're looking at our feet, and we're sliding through our feeds. You know, we're, it's a very closed off feeling, and, and you're, you're being really passive about how you're viewing your content. And it's the same way when you're watching television or you're on the internet and you're sitting down, you're lying down, and you're just getting your information through a screen. And, you know, virtual reality is different. We call it VR, it's cool kids. Um, virtual reality is different. Because VR, when, you can, when the viewer consumes the content, it's, we try to mimic real, the real world around us because you have access to everything. So think about walking down the street. And you aren't just going to be, if we were mimicking what it would be like to be on your phone, you aren't just going to be looking down at your feet the whole time when you're walking down the street because you're going to miss everything. You're going to miss your buddy walking next to you. You're going to miss the whole world. You're going to get hit by a car. So in virtual reality, we try to mimic the real world in the same way where in order to follow the story and to follow the action, you have to take advantage and look everywhere. It's a really, it's active viewing. You, you have to be able to follow the story, move your head, move your body, and in some of the, in some of the experiences, as if you walk, it moves with you. And you, you step inside of a new world. It's really active viewing. And you know, I've only been in virtual reality for nine months to a year, but granted, I'm, I'm in it a lot. I'm, I make content every day. I consume virtual reality every day. I'm, I'm in the headset a lot. So I'm really close to it, and I'm closer than the average viewer. But when I go back to to being on my feeds and being hunched over, I get really frustrated. Because in virtual reality, I have control. And I, I have presence inside that space. And when I'm down on my feed, they're just giving me what they want to give me. I don't have control and I can't turn, the, turn my camera left and right because there's nothing there. And I've gotten frustrated when I don't have control. And I don't have, I don't have presence inside of that content because it's not there, it doesn't exist. And I think that's really the core of why virtual reality is special and why virtual reality is different, is that it's active viewing. It's, it's a different way of thinking about how to consume content and to consume different kinds of entertainment and, and media and education. And VR is really hot right now. I mean, it's, it's, it was on, when I get a call from my mother and she tells me that, oh my gosh, I just saw VR on, on my morning show. That's when I know it's cool. That's when I know it's everywhere. Um, and that happened the other day, and uh, because virtual reality is everywhere, and as all of you start to experience virtual reality for your first time, and as you get into it and you start to experience it more and more, I just want you to think about how VR is different, and how all of a sudden you have a newfound control over the media that you're inside and that you're experiencing. And that's, that's a different experience than it's ever been before, is that you now have presence inside of that and presence inside, of, presence inside of your experiences. And I just want to challenge you, next time you're in a virtual reality experience, to think about the control that you have and how special that is. Thank you very much.